Okay, so today we're going to create a Fermata for Java project that will allow us to connect our Java program to an Arduino board, in this case a Seed Studio uh, Arduino for Beginner kit. We're going to start off by creating a little for loop that doesn't have any Fermata code in it, but we're going to test out a for loop that has a 500 millisecond or half a second pause in it that's done 10 times. We're going to have a little print statement at the beginning and a little print statement at the end. We're just going to make sure that our program runs just like this, a good test. And it does. It lasts for five seconds. It's in fast forward here, but it did last for five seconds. All right, next we're going to add in the Fermata for Java library through Maven version 2.3.8. And we're going to put in the SLF4J library afterwards like this 1.7.3. It's the JCL version of it, and we're going to put that in there as well. So both of those have been imported with Maven, and we're going to put an import statement right here for the Fermata device portion of the library, and we're going to add in the IO exception uh, library as well. Now we're going to create an object based on Fermata for Java called My Arduino Board, and we're going to feed it the specific USB port for my computer. Now in this case, it's written one particular way in this string. For your computer, it's very likely to be different. Use, as you can see at the bottom of the screen, use the Arduino IDE in order to figure out which of those ports it is. Now I'm going to have a try, catch, finally block set right here because we, we have to try to open up the port. And if we can't open up the port, we have to give the user an indication that we failed. And then if we've opened it up and we haven't failed, then we can finally, using that finally portion of the block, do uh, the for loop that we want. And at the end of that, we're going to have a stop method called on the connection to the Arduino board. And in contrast, we start in the try portion with a start and an ensure initialization is done method call, which has um, IO exception uh, requirements, which is why we put the throws IO exception at the top right there in the main method call. Okay. And so we have to add in just a little bit more right there. And now we can run it. Like this. And you can see that with the flashing LED from the USB port on the board, we have a connection that is successful. And then the Java program says that it's ended. Fantastic. So we've tested to make sure that our Fermata for Java program can connect to our board. Next up, we're going to create a connection inside of uh, Fermata for Java for an LED. In this case, the LED is found on pin D4. We're going to call it big LED. And we're going to create it right here inside of the finally block. So we create a pin object called red LED. And we use the get pin method on it to assign its pin. And we're going to say that it's an output by setting the mode. So that's the set mode method. Next, we set whether or not it's on or off using set value method. In this case, we start with a one and we end with a zero. So one means on zero means off. We're going to test it now. We're at the testing stage. Let's see if it turns that LED on. And there we go. It is turned on and then it will turn off after the loop is done. Excellent. So we've now tested that. So we're doing development and then testing in sequence, starting with the simplest thing and gradually adding complexity. This is a very good strategy for developing things. Next, we're going to create a button object. And we're going to assign it D6, which is the location of our button on the uh, Grove beginner kit. We're going to find that up here as a constant. So button is given a value of six. You can see the other values of pins are on that web page on my blog. So we create a button object and that button will be pulled every time we go through the loop. So once every 500 milliseconds, we're going to ask to find out from Fermata for Java and then through Fermata on the board itself, what is the value of the button? Is it pressed? 
so a value of 1, or is it uh, released, which is a value of 0. So let's run it. I'm going to press the button once the loop is engaged. And you'll see in the terminal, the value starts at 0, so unpressed, and then 1, which means pressed, and 0 because I unpressed it. Excellent. So I've pulled it. Next, we're going to add a listener. So we're going to remove that thing from the for loop, that statement, we remove it. And now we're going to use a listener um, concept on the button, which means that the regular flow of operation of the program will be interrupted by the listener whenever there's a change in the value of the button. So rather than wait in the loop, we're simply going to react whenever the button is changed. Now, by adding this pin event listener in the add event listener, the override for the on mode change and on value change methods structure, it appears because it's pulled out of the library. And it's our job to fill in what happens on on mode change or on value change. And in our case, we're interested in on value change. So whether it's been pressed or released, and every time it gets pressed or released, we want to say what the new value of the button is. So it's a very reactive approach to sensing, which is important for embedded systems. So we're going to run it. And every time I press it, it goes to uh, 1. And when I release it, it goes to 0. So if I press and release, you'll see a, a pair of values, 1 and then 0, appear on there. Because every time I press or I release, it gets registered by the listener. And even though I don't have a print statement in the for loop, it will still print because the listener will interrupt the regular flow of operation. There you have it.